Hi, this is Greg. I'd like to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. This is week five of the Ships Corridor project with Hearst Starts Molds. Um, it's been about a week, week and a half since the last time we had a video up. And I was just looking at what my start date was earlier and the uh, video one went up on March 11th. Today is the 16th of April. So we're just a little bit over a month um, into this project. And I'm pretty happy to say, and I'm relieved to say, is that all the casting and assembly is done for the tile system. Um, if you're having an idea, if you want to know how many pieces that is, that's 126 pieces. I made one extra piece, a, a big piece, because like I said earlier, I'm using this for more than just the uh, Space Hulk. So my set is 127 pieces, and um, I'll... Uh, give you a look at what all that looks like in one second but what we have in front of me is just the plans that we were using and I followed these plans exactly so everywhere that you see a D on here is a diamond tile you know everywhere there's an X it's an X tile a G was a great tile and an XS was a um, part diamond part great tile so I took Bruce's instructions followed them to the T I had 50 pounds of Merlin's magic and I have less than two pounds left. So when he says that this will take um, 50 pounds of dental plaster to cast both the basic and the advanced set, he wasn't lying on there. I mean, this took 48 pounds and I didn't do a lot of extra casting. I did a few extra molds you saw in the other videos, but some of that was white, you know, so I was still burning off. This is that piece that I made. This is a, uh, a five by five with four exit and you know so this is 20 this piece alone is 29 blocks you know plus all the industrial edge molding pieces that go around this this is a monster of a piece but I wanted to have two of these and I had just enough blocks and finagled a couple places that maybe weren't exactly what the plan called for but the industrial edge molding goes all the way around I think it was on these 15 pieces or something like that. I think I was like one short or two short, and that was it. So um, I did make two of these, but everything else is exactly per plan. So this is, we're in here, we're in the advanced section because we have a lot wider tiles. And so a lot of these pieces are all one-offs, um, except down here, there's three of these that take you from a single corridor to a three-way corridor. So that's one of the transition pieces. Um, on this page, you know, there's some more. So you've got the single corridor transitioning into a cross, a wide corridor cross passage, and then more hallways and things like that. So this part here, yeah, there was a couple times during the week I thought I had enough blocks, and I was trying to finish out this page right here, and then I'd find out I'd be short. And then I sat there and I swore I had enough blocks coming in, and I was like two diamond plates short. And on the industrial edge mold, I was short the, um, which pieces we use a lot of here. We use a lot of piece four and five, and especially piece five. So I was short on piece fives. So I had to go back and cast um, the industrial edge mold and the deck grate mold an additional four times and I was able to finish up last night. So um, the pe well, I finished up Saturday night. The pieces dried till last night. And so I took and put everything together last night and uh, put them on black foam core board. I went through five pieces of black foam core. Um, I did run out. I do buy it from my local hobby shop, but he had run out. So I had to go out and find it in town. I had originally, I went to Michael's to find it because they use black foam core on their display shelving, but when I went to find it on the shelf, they didn't have it. And so then they wanted to sell me the trifold black foam core board. And I wouldn't suggest doing that because that's $16 for the black. So I just went next door to Target and in their school craft section, they had black foam core board there for $2.30. So I bought another couple pieces. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the camera, I'm gonna move it out to my living room, see who keeps texting me and uh, I'm going to set up out there and we'll show you what the pieces look like when it's done. Be right back. All right, this is 127 pieces 
of the ship's corridor board. This is a four foot by eight foot pool table that this is on top of right now. And we laid all the pieces out on it. So this gives you an idea of just how big this project is if you're gonna do both the basic and advanced sets. I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod here for a second. We can get a little closer. And we've seen some of these pieces. We got the cross sections. I'm down towards this end here. You're looking at some of the bigger pieces. These are some of those bigger passageways that I was talking about that you can put the end rooms on like this. And then out of that machinery mold, we're gonna build the pieces that'll fit right in here. This is that 29 piece. This is the one I made the extra one of right here. So I, these were leftover blocks. Um, actually, the one at the other end was the leftover one. And that's the 29 block piece. This is the biggest piece in the board. Five by ones, two by ones, four by ones. Uh, you got your, uh, your corner pieces, your T intersections. These are just like one block spacers. Uh, you got the one type of bulkhead doors. These are the other type of bulkhead doors. That's the uh, two by two with the four exit. Forty-eight pounds of Merlin's magic it's sitting right here on this pool table. Again, we're getting over here to some of the bigger pieces. This is one of the transition pieces. And everywhere you see these black squares or the uh, circles, there's stuff that's gonna go in there. There's um, fans that'll go in some, grates that'll go in the other, half open hatches and some of the square ones. So those are all pieces that'll get put in as we're going. So, and this was the extra one, so. I had enough tiles, I could kind of duplicate the pattern of the other one pretty close and I put it together. So I'm real excited. This was, this was a lot of work um, and we have a lot of painting because the next step right now is to paint all of this. So I've got some ideas on the paint. I had taken my favorite Russian green and sprayed it on a three by five card and took that down to Lowe's and made myself a can of Valspar Russian Green. So, because I wasn't about to take my little uh, $3 pots of Russian Green and try and paint 127 pieces of terrain. You know, so I went down and did a quart of Valspar. It was $10. It matches, I mean, this computer controlled matching that both Lowe's and Home Depot have is fantastic. So keep that in mind if you got a favorite color you know, like whole red. Whole red is one of my favorite colors because I use that on my Cotor War Machine Force. I mean, if you're painting a big terrain piece, you know, don't burn your, your good paint on that. Just paint some on an index card, take it down to Lowe's, they'll put it in the computer. You can get yourself a quart of whole red or Russian green or whatever other color you like for 10 bucks. Um, the paint is super thick. You know, so you do have to dilute it down. And that's about three parts paint to one part water. And that seems to run fine. And it dries rock solid. I mean, you don't, that stuff isn't gonna chip off. So, I mean, it's going on, it's, it's house paint with a lifetime guarantee and you're putting it on your terrain. So it's, it's gonna last, you know, it'll resist the chips and break. So I'm gonna go with Russian green for the base color. Um, we're gonna go with our steel for the, uh, the diamond plate and we'll work on that. And then I need industrial edge mold. I'm gonna mess around trying to paint these wires, you know, bolt gun metal on the fans, do some, uh, some shading and highlighting, maybe a few pigments on these exhaust stacks right here and things like that. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna play around with some colors this week, settle on that. And then uh, next weekend I'll put a quick update up with a few of the pieces that I've painted and uh, from that point on, it's paint, paint, paint. And um, I've got three months.
July 14th is the uh, Pelican 2 here in Pensacola. So that's, that's the goal. I think I'm well on target. It took one month to get the pieces done. I'm, I imagine we're going to have a solid month of base coating and dry brushing and stuff like that because I get quite a bit of time to work on it at night. But base coating this stuff, just like the Descent, is going to be a bear. I mean, this, this is going to be clocking in some major hours. So. Um, so that's our update for this week. I'm really happy with what we got. You know, that's a, that's a lot of pieces. So if you're thinking about doing this project, that this is, this is what you have in store for yourself. You know, if you're thinking about buying a project like this off somebody, this is the type of work that they're going to put in for you. So that's just a little something for going forward. So you guys have a good night. I appreciate you taking your time to watch. If, uh, if you liked the video, hit like. And if you like my channel, click subscribe if you haven't. And I'll talk to you in a weekend.